ask for a change. But don't give me too much. They say you don't want you don't want people giving you too much. No, well you know what? See, like when you panhandle, people like you to come off with some clever kind of saying, and it's really unique because every individual's got what's going to make them laugh, and you may not even understand why they're laughing. And then I don't know anything, and so I just depend upon what you might call the spontaneous ad living extemporaneous. That some spirit goes through me and gives me a suggestion, and sometimes people really crack up, and that doesn't mean they're going to give me money. But see, it's a joke. If you notice, a lot of people, when I say don't give me too much, they don't take that literally. They know there's something which you might call ironic or whatever about it. It's like divine sarcasm. In other words, it's like, well, man, I'm not even going to give you anything. What do you, you know, that kind of a thing, right? But it's all innate. In other words, you just watch the expressions on the face. A lot of okay. people, they just, uh, they just laugh and smile at it. Okay, I'll videotape the reactions. Okay, okay. Gentlemen, please don't give me too much. I'll give you this. That's a lot, thank you. Now, do you, would you consider that to be too much? <laughs> it's not a literal thing. It's not a literal thing. Too much is what they think is too much. Too, thing, too much is what, is what they think would is too much. Would you please, don't give me too much. How much do you think too much is to give this man? $84. You think too much? To, so, like, anything under $82 is not too much, sir. What's your name? Vivek, V-I-V-E-K. V-I-V-E-K, okay. See, I don't know if you noticed the smile on that woman's face when I said that, see, because a lot of people just naturally make some smile. Right. Ladies, please don't give me too much. Let me just ask you a question. How much do you think would be too much to give this man? You don't know? Gentlemen, don't give me too much. See how? See how so, like, a penny is too much for these guys to give to you. Yeah, yeah, right. And in a way, they may not they may not have any money. Right. Don't give me too much. Yeah, see, no one can afford anything nowadays. It's like the prices of gas are through, through the roof, so no one can much. afford to give a starving man a penny. Don't give me too much, gentlemen. And they did what you, they do what you tell them. They don't give you too much at all. Who's in the mood to spare change? Okay, wallet. I'm gonna give you a dollar. Is that too much? Would you be mad if I gave you a dollar? Oh, that's great, boss. That's wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna give you a dollar. You're the greatest. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Who is in the mood to spare change? But don't give me too much. Is this? No, don't. Maybe. No, oh no. I thought it was one. No, yeah. Hey, boss, it's like no. Have the best of all lives. Okay, That's just right. videotape this. All right, we're out of here. What was the Vivek? Yeah, V I V E K. Thank you so much. Well, you guys have the best evening of your life. I hope your documentaries are smash. Yeah. Okay. Any any other words? Okay, I'll give you the ultimate word, but you're gonna have to be really sharp. I mean, you have to be the sharpest of the sharpest of the sharpest to take this the way it's meant to be taken. Right. Okay. Now, this is the greatest advice that the greatest men in history have given all of us unthinking masses. Now here's what they tell us, because we're all the same. It doesn't matter if you're the head of the pack, the furthest back, 10 million PhD degrees, totally illiterate. It doesn't matter. We're all the masses. Okay, here's what they tell us. Quote, we are gods because we're good men. And we know everything because we started first with knowing ourselves. Unquote, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. You're going to have to be sharp to sit down and see what that means. Because wow. that's, that's all comprehensive. Vivek? That's an absolute. It, it doesn't have any exceptions in it. That's the total uh, education of eternity. The reason that all the educations of us masses of formal systems combined, multiplied zillions of times, I could compare to that. So, I mean, it's the ultimate. It's the ultimate. That is so much. Yeah, okay. Really. You, okay. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, it is. It's uh, that's you know, a lot to, yeah, to comprehend. Yeah. In other words, watch. Just stop and think of this. This whole world we live in is a depth of our soul, our mind. It's a dream because there's not anything that's in the least what you think it is. Because in reality, the nature of matter is the very definition of spirit. It's something totally invisible to our physical senses. It's a whirling force of pure gold and white light known as atomic molecular energy. But even that is like minus infinity compared to what I just told you. Oh my God. Yeah, really. Dude, you know yeah. so much. No, I don't know anything. That's the thing. Look at what. If you realize you don't know anything, then you can start to become smart. But if you already think you have the truth, you know you won't make the slice up to get it because you think you have it. So the secret is to realize 
I don't know anything about anything about anything about anything, including I don't know that I don't know. I mean, it's that ultimate. That's where you start from. That's where you start from. Then you can get the truth. Because then you got a fresh start. You don't have any prejudices. You don't have any. You need to listen to what this man is saying right now. It's unbelievable. Dude, check it out. No, no, no. That's for you guys. That's it. Oh, for us? For us? Okay. It's over. It's over. Okay. Okay. All right. Dude, this guy is amazing. (laughs) Vivek is his name. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Dude, he knows the truth. No, no, I told you I don't know anything. But you were were just saying so much. This is the way to get the truth. Later, guys. But I don't know anything because I'm at the beginning. I'm a beginner, right? I haven't reached the goal. I told you what they told us to do, and now I have to start it myself. I've been working on it, but I'm just a beginner. That's the secret. Just you can never I'm truly know the truth, right? What? You can never truly know the truth, No, yes, right? you can. And there's people on the planet Earth right now that I've met, and they do know it. And if you ever meet them, it'll blow your mind. But how do you know they really exist okay. if you don't know the truth? Because I've met them. Now watch, look at what I'm trying to tell you is this. When you meet the really true people like this, they are pure love. They don't ask a thing for themselves. They do everything for everybody else. They don't have the slightest bit of fear. You could have an infinite amount of cobra poison sticks. They wouldn't be afraid of them in the least, man. That's just a mild hint. They have no fear. They're totally spiritual. They love. They can live in the physical body as long as they want because their love runs them and they don't depend upon material or mental loss. They're totally spiritual beyond it. And so they can live in their physical body as long as they want without eating or drinking or breathing or sleeping because look at man. They have perfect control over the atomic molecular structure of the physical body. In other words, when you reach a certain level, which is nowhere near the ultimate, but it gives you a mild hint about what your abilities are, your potential. When you reach a certain level, what they call the seven chakra of yoga's reality, you can control the atomic molecular structure of every cell in your physical body, so you could disappear in a flash of light right now. I just had the best idea. Let's start a cult. No, 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 no I don't want to do We that. can make so, so much money. No, He's no. saying we don't know anything. No, no. The, the money is. But well, we can make money telling want, people that. I don't want any money. I don't want any money. I don't want any money. You don't want any money, man. Hey, when you go for this, money won't mean anything much to you. I'm panhandling out because I have basic needs. But I'm just trying to say, you don't want to do it for money. Like, look at watch this. An intelligent man never has ulterior motives. He doesn't do something to have the greatest sex life. He doesn't do something to become famous, make money, political power, social position. Look at watch. This is a test, a standard of how intelligent anybody is, no matter what his reputation is. Look at. An intelligent man, he doesn't care what the teacher thinks of him, he doesn't care about the grade, he just wants the truth and that's it. That's it. You just, I I just want the truth, man. How do you ever truly know you know the truth, though? Well, okay, let me give you Because you're example. basically on something you already know, you know? No, 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 no. Or, I can, I can give Because you don't really know anything. No, you, look, you, yeah, but look at... We don't, don't know that we're I, both here, right? I don't want to make a long story, but let me tell you something in principle. Look at watch. Let me tell you something I know from my personal experience. But it's going to take a miracle to get you to do it because you already think you're doing it. That's the thing. That's the problem. When you already think you're doing the right thing, but you're not, because that's the definition of a mistake, is you but what's know right? it's a mistake. What is right? How, what? Well, I was going to tell okay. you. Now watch. Look Sorry. at watch. It's really simple. But here's the thing, though. It's going to take some kind of a real kick in you to get you to do it. In other words, in this world, the masses don't realize that we are slaves to the max, to authority outside of us. Well, we think, hey, land of the free, I'm already free. And you don't realize, man, you've never really, really, really thought for yourself one time in your life. All you do is repeat what you've been told to think about everything ever since you were born a baby. You've never once been the authority. It's been somebody else. You don't sit down and think for yourself. Now, let me tell you what happens when you do. But I'm not going to keep going on and on. You're going to have to do this yourself. Now, watch. Here's what happens. All right. If a great miracle happens in your life, because you already think you're doing this, so something's going to have to get you to really do it, where you sit down and for the first time in your life, you come from the perspective, the attitude that you're the authority here, not your parents, not Einstein, not the police, not Not you. the government. You're not the, only, the government. Not the military. Absolutely nobody else. No, okay, okay. Now, that means with your own intelligence, what is natural, innate wisdom, common sense, not what is a worldly reputation. Now, that means you look at what you're willing to live and die for, what you've been taught, okay? Because you were born a baby and you were never an authority in one subject. There was always somebody outside of you, right? And you went along with it and you bleeded so much you thought you knew, but you never thought about it yourself. So if you sit down and think for yourself, you get this incredible flash of light love, and it's the most powerful experience your whole life. I mean, compared to what you've been doing, it's nowhere near the most powerful compared to your potential. But compared to your whole life up to that point, your whole life up to that point is literally nothing compared to it. For the first time in your life, you're not afraid to face reality. You want the truth. You're not doing it for an ulterior motive. You're intelligent to the max. 
you're above all the world's authorities that cause all the problems. Because if the educational systems were so smart, we wouldn't have our problems. We created the social system and nobody else did. We're responsible for every problem we have. And the, the social system is a dead failure. And the rich are passing laws against the poor. All the countries contradict themselves by uh, passing laws against street fighting in the very moment they jump out on street fights, turn the war, double standard, contradiction. You couldn't do that if you thought for yourself. We make a god out of everything in this world except the only thing that counts, ourself. We make a god out of all our creations, all our games, football, basketball, baseball, the political power games, social position games, everything but ourself. We're the master, we're the ruler, we're the creator, and we have this masochistic streak inside, this superstitious fear that turns a lot of atomic energy into matter. And we think it's wrong to make a god out of our own self. That's taboo, that's blasphemous. What are you talking about, man? You're crazy. God is just perfect character, perfect love. There's nothing wrong with that. But when your mind is hypnotized with fear, you'll see bad in everything that's perfect of itself. So the world finds fault with the idea that we're God, even though it's obvious that we're God. I don't want to make a long story. I'll give you one of the many examples that proves we're God. Religion. Give me all of them. No, no, I don't want to make a long thing here. Now look at the, the important point is to get the principle. If you ever got it strongly enough in your head that it's literally true, it's not a, a what you call a wishful thinking, a fancy slogan, it's true. You're the God in the story. If you ever got that in your head, boy, you'd be gone from the world like right now. You turn your mind away from all worldly interests and you say, goodbye, I'm my own man, goodbye, you right in the middle of the world. You could be the king of every country in this world and you could throw it all away and say, goodbye, that's your personal power, man. That's not what the world calls power. That's your real self that the world has no authority over and it's your willpower and you can do everything you want. They don't own you. If you don't like it, goodbye, I'm gone. My parents don't own me. Why do you think the Bible says when you turn your mind away from your parents, it's the end of the world? The only thing that keeps this world going is we come into this world and we totally forget the obvious fact that something can't come from nothing. Obviously, we lived forever before we came here. That's why we're going to live forever after we leave. We're the God in the story, man. But since you forgot it, you can't accept yourself as your own authority. And you have to have an authority in your life. So you accept your parents. Nobody else. They're the cornerstone. They tell you, do what the policeman says. Believe what you're told at school. So the Bible says, when you turn your mind away from your parents, boom! That's the end of this whole mess, man. You're going to wake up and love enough to be your own God. And that's all there is to what? I was going to give you one of the many, and I mean many, obvious facts that we're God. And it's obvious, because it's true, we are. Okay, now watch. Nobody can deny this, unless they're worthless, and you don't take worthless people seriously. It's a historical fact, man. Throughout history, what is religion? Oh, we said, it's an absolute. God is everywhere. Well, who's this right here, and who's that right there? I'm Brian. This is Zach. But I'm just trying to tell you. A real smart part of me didn't want to do this with you guys. I always do this. I tell myself I'm not going to do this anymore, and then boom, I start telling people this stuff. I See, look, watch. In general, I don't want to do this because most people aren't ready for this. The world is not ready for this. People don't want the truth. People right. want to be fooled. They want to be lied to. They don't want the truth, okay? So a real strong part of me is always saying, stop talking to the people, go off, meditate, find it out yourself. Because this is what the great spiritual masters have always said, and I haven't obeyed them. They've always said, okay, you get the idea in your head, but before you go and tell other people, make sure that you know, you don't just believe, I just believe, I don't know. Make sure you know for sure, and then you're so powerful, you can go help people a zillion times more than I can in my low level. That's why basically this is not a good idea for me to do. But hopefully it's, it'll be okay in this case. I hope it's okay in this case. It's great, okay. dude. Okay, gentlemen, okay, then that's it. That's We're going to show this to people, and they're going to they're gonna know. Well, whatever. It's all your personal power, man. It's how much faith you have in yourself. Watch this. Look, it's really easy. See, we're talking on the level of who you really are. We right. don't know a thing about each other by worldly standards. I don't know a thing about you. You don't know a thing about me. But the thing that really counts is your eternal nature, who you really are before he came in and took a false identity by forgetting he had always existed in eternity, went into the causal body in the astral. This is the lowest of the lowest. This is the hell in the story. This is earth. Okay, now watch. Here's what I'm trying to say. Use your intelligence. There's one Whoa. definition. What? Let me finish. Look. There's one definition for intelligence when you're really sharp. Okay? It's freedom. Because if you're not free, you're not smart, you're in a jam, you're a slave. Now watch. Here's what an intelligent guy does. He owns himself. You're not an animal, you're not a piece of shit, you're a human being, man. You're the pride of creation, and your glory is your intelligence. Now look, what is intelligent is to own yourself. 
100% perfectly now, forever. Boom, there's no limits. You don't put a limit on yourself. The moment you have a double standard, you're dead. Then you're condoning the contradiction. You're saying, well, it's okay to be a little bit of a slave. No, no double standards, baby. When I want something, I want it perfectly, I want it now, and I want it forever. You gotta use your intelligence. Don't put a limit on yourself. There's no limit in reality. We have no beginning and we have no ending. We've always existed, so you can't measure the truth because you have to have limits to measure the truth. You can't measure eternity and we're eternity. You can't measure consciousness. You can't think of anything you don't think about. Everything is your consciousness, the soul, the spirit, your mind, your awareness. It's invisible. No scientific measuring instrument could measure it. It's too subtle. It goes all the way to infinity. So, so you got to have some self-respect and don't put a price on yourself. When people say they're worth a zillion dollars, they're stupid. They're putting a price on themselves. They're limiting themselves. In reality, you're as priceless as the God of infinity. Are you a slave? And that's the truth. I'm not going to get into it. I already told you I was a beginner. Remember I told you I was a beginner? So obviously I'm still like everybody else in this world. I'm still in this dimension. I haven't conquered it. I already told you that the great masters tell us that we should become aware of it before we go and tell other people. So in a way, I'm taking a big chance by doing this. I'm contradicting myself heavily, and I'll hope to God I can We accept no mistake. contradictions. But anyway, it's up to you guys whether you're ready for this, whether it means anything to you. Right. Because this is the ultimate truth. you got to use your intelligence, man. That what I'm it telling makes, you... A lot of it makes sense. Well, it's going to take a lot of your personal power, but now watch. What I told you, I'm not exaggerating. What I told you is like nothing compared to the truth. It's the mildest and hence possible, right? So so what I told you, don't take it too literally because the truth would be what I said, but there'll be infinitely more ramifications, infinitely more perspectives, angles, degrees, depth. I just gave you like nothing, but it gives you the idea. Now watch, here's what I'm trying to tell you. If you've ever done this, then you got to remember you did it. Because when I did, I totally forgot it as quick as I did it. It took me years before I even remember what happened. Look, because we're in a hypnotic trance, man. This is a hypnotic trance. And when you get a flash, it's just a flash. You don't know you're hypnotized, so you don't know you're waking up. It takes power, man, to realize we've always existed. This is a hypnotic trance. The whole universe, everybody, matters atomic energy, man. The whole universe is playing a game on itself. Atomic energy is playing the role of matter. It's pretending it's matter, and in reality, it's atomic energy, which is only the mild stance. In reality, the atomic energy is the astral light, something like that, and then the cosmos, and then eternity. I mean, we're like minus infinity. In other words, like people that tell us that we use 5, 10, 15, 20% of our brain, they don't know anything. We use the percentage of our potential of our intelligence that even the smartest in this dimension uses right now is point oh 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 a zillion more o's one percent. That's okay now watch. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. Now watch. If you listen to this really sharp, you're gonna get so much out of life, it'll be the all now here's what I'm telling you. If you ever sit down and for the first time in your life, you look at yourself, you're not the universe's slave, you're the authority in your life, you look at what you really believe, what you're willing to live and die for, the very focus center point of your own existence, you're going to get a flash of light love. It's true spiritual light love, great enough time and energy. You're not afraid to face the truth. And when you get that flash, hold on to it with everything you got. Because that's what's waking you up, that you've been in a dream ever since you were born and conceived and forgot that you've always existed. This is a literal dream right here, right here. What we're going through right now is just as much a dream as when you go to sleep at night and have a dream. I'm not I exaggerating. I, I dream he got a rehab. It doesn't matter if you're on drugs or not, if hey, you're intellectual. Hey, watch, watch, look, watch. Look at Now look at, watch, look at. I, watch, watch. I didn't even look at that person because I don't want to even know that person. Now, let me see this. Watch, look at That person to me doesn't exist, doesn't even know what she's talking about in the least, right? Right, okay, absolutely. Now, so I didn't even look at her because I didn't, you know, I didn't know why, why she said what she said. Everything she said was a lie. And I said, well, she must have got, I don't even know what it means, but I didn't want to care. I said, I didn't want to look at her. I, don't even pay any attention to her. She just... You know, she, she doesn't know what she's talking about at all. She doesn't exist in reality, right? Okay, so all we're talking about is this. Look, when you think for yourself, you get a flash of that light. That's your God. God's the only one that can think for himself. God's the only one that feels love and smart enough to be his own authority. You literally have to be God to think for yourself and not be a team. I'm God. Yeah, but look at we want to be humble. I'm God. God. No, no, no. That's not the attitude. No, that's no. the wrong attitude. No, you're taking it the wrong way totally, man. Right. Yeah, that's totally the wrong way, man. 
Look at the only way you can take this seriously is you're going to have to be the most humble person that ever lived. That's the only way. I told you what the great masters are like. Right. They are perfect servants. They do everything for everybody else for free, and they don't ask a thing for themselves. And that was not your attitude in the least when you did that. Your attitude was arrogant, haughty, conceited, vain. It was flippant. It wasn't really sincere and serious, compassionate, kind, forgiving, and pure love. See, the whole idea is perfect love. You need to understand, though, that we already think that we're gods. Like, we are, like, relating to you so much on the level you're talking about. But the fact of the matter is, we're learning so much by listening to you speak right now, but we already think that we're gods. Like, that's why we reached this connection with you. But you're telling us way more than we knew. Like, we have, like, a sense of what's going on. We know that we are gods, and every one of us is a god, and we have the power inside of us. But you're just, you're just... We're, we're the main gods. We, us three because we thought of it. No, no, we're the, we're no, the main no, 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 no. We're all gods. We're, we are all gods. You just have to realize it. Because you have all the power in the world. You have all the power. Who's to say that, that there was one supreme being to, to sprinkle down uh, you know, seeds and make the earth spread out from nowhere? Who's to say that wasn't human beings? Because we are, look, look at all this we've made around us. This is our world. This is what we've done. You know what I'm talking about? Like, only God can have created such a masterpiece. Look at this. It's all fucking, it's a, it's a masterpiece. We, we have constructions, and we've got lights. We've got bright fucking lights. And we have people wearing clothes. And, and they're just... High fives. Dude. That is what I'm talking about! That's what, I'm that's what you were talking about. High fives! Do you know that you're God? I know I'm Jesus and I'm spreading love. No no no, 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 hold on, hold on, bring it down a notch. Right. Do you know that you are God? God, I smoke enough shit to know that I am God. His parents are the shit. You think I'm some peanut butter? They eat your asshole. High fives. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. High fives, man. High fives. High fives. That guy did not exist. Hey, now look at what. High fives, High fives. High fives. High fives. High fives, man. High fives. High fives. High fives. High fives. High fives. Hey, but no, no, look at the thing we're talking yeah. about. High five! High five? Yeah. High fives. High five, guys? High fives? High fives. Hey, look, the thing we're talking about, though, man, is really serious stuff. Look at the thing we're talking about, man, is really serious stuff. I hope I didn't make a mistake by telling you this stuff. Now, look at watch. The thing we're talking about is supposed to get us to turn our mind totally away from this whole dimension, okay? In other words, our real self does not exist in this dimension. High fives? This is a dream. Yeah. No? No high fives? Ah. Good. Well, look at I don't know if this guy is going to listen, but it's really important. Look at it's really important what we're talking about, man. It's beyond words how important it is. Look at we get this idea that we're gods, okay? Let me ask you, how did you get that idea that you were God? When I started walking around and feeling completely in control of my body, my spirit, and my mind, when I started gliding around while I was walking and just and just hovering over everything and realizing that, you know, it's only a sense of, of, of body and self. Like, life is just a dream, you know? Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is just a dream. That's why that's such a classic song, because it's like... The truth. I am in control of everything that happens. You don't know to me. the truth. Sam. No, no, no. It's not even that. The, it's not even like control of things that happen to me because time is irrelevant. You know what I'm talking about? You keep going through the motions, but time is irrelevant in in, in, in the immensity because like time is is just as good as taste or or smell or even less than that. It time is is your disregard for something that you don't even think about, like like a piece of dun, dust or a piece of flint. It's something you disregard in the end, because that's how small the concept of time is in the reality of all the scope of everything that is to be. We are gods because we control. We made up the time. Who do you think made up the time? Do you think the dinosaurs made up the time? We made up the time. We just came out and we said, this is how we're going to schedule our events and our agendas to make sure that we're all on the same level. Let's make a system of time. Okay? So we made up that. What else did we make up? We made up this whole concept of cold, hot, right, wrong, evil, good. Humans made this up. Humans, or, or the living beings on earth made this up because these are not any laws that anything... Who knows why sometimes it feels cold and sometimes it feels hot. But there's feelings in between you can't describe and you cannot label everything. So we are the gods because we have created all the systems that we live by today. In that very concept, we are God. Okay, but now look at what I'm trying to think about. Look at 
I want you to understand this, so you tell me something about your life, but I want you to see some kind of a spirit that is invincible. See, in other words, we live in this dimension, living our whole life for who we relate we are to, okay? Now, there has to come a moment of infinite drama, like what I'm telling you about, where you get that tremendous flash of light love that shows heavy negativity in our mind that keeps us from knowing we're God. You can think you're God and believe you're God, but that's hugely different from absolutely knowing for sure. See, when you know, you go into another dimension. You're in another world, even though you're still in your physical body. You're no longer of the physical universe, all right? Right. And we're not in that. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is this. Look at You want to have the experience where you get that tremendous flash of light love that shows you that your whole life, in that respect, is one big death. And we have died by being born physically, we die spiritually by forgetting we've always existed, we're in a dream, okay? Now, I don't know enough to understand whether the way you've just described it is equal in principle to my experience, since, I mean, I'm only one guy and everybody's going through it their own way. So I don't know if, if you have gone through exactly the specific, significant uh, chapter, episode on the spiritual path that I'm describing, but I will tell you something very important that you got to think about. Look at from the way that I see you guys acting tonight, which is no different from what everybody, including me, strongly is in this dimension, but it seriously has to be faced, is that, look at you guys have been acting what you might call flippant, which you might call trivial, not really serious and sincere about how important it is to conquer all the misery of this hellish world we live in. See, because this is literally hell we live in. People commit suicide all the time. People die in agony of cancer and AIDS and have migraine headaches and paralyze their whole life and are blind. That's pure hell. That's pure hell, not to mention way, way more worse scenarios for other people. We wouldn't want to be that way right now. No. And so you got to be sharp to understand that it's only the love of God that keeps us above that to whatever extent we're above it right now, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is this. Now look at We live in this dimension where we don't know better than what we do. And we're all a bunch of pathological liars. We lie to ourselves and act like we believe our ideals more than we do. Things like land of the free and all men are equal and all that stuff. In no way we believe it as much as we think we do. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you have these tremendous spiritual experiences like getting flash of love and flash of light to wake you up, it's only a flash, we lose it, we're still in this dimension. If we don't keep going, there's going to be a serious problem beyond words for us. Beyond words, I'll let you watch. I had my second flash of love many years after my first flash of love, okay? And it was way more powerful than my first. Here's how I got my second. I woke up one morning and I was in a state of consciousness where I was absolutely one with all the past, present, future, physical, astral, causal, eternal, all spiritual, so mental, emotional, physical, financial. So in other words, hey, we're having to talk to you, boss. We're having to talk. It's important. Are those naked girls? That's right. Dude. You got like, it? No. That's so, that's so right, do it, minuscule on the scale of what we're talking okay, about. Naked at, girls? Here's what I'm trying to say. Now, look, here's what I'm trying to say. I woke up one Although, morning. Naked I, girls? That sounds pretty good. Here I was, one with all of life, okay? You can have a flash of light. It's only a flash. It's, it's a guy getting closer to reality, but he's not strong enough. He's too full of fear and not loving enough to hold it. So I lost it. But believe me, let me tell you, it is infinitely more true than the fact that we're standing here right now talking to each other. That's how powerful it is. Now look at watch. When I woke up one morning, I was one with all the all that could ever be, okay? Everything is our own self. We're all God. All right, now, I had a flash of that. The perfect light, the perfect love that is eternal, we've always existed, and we're supposed to wake up and go to that dimension, the highest level of heaven, go through the hell we're here, go through the in-between states, go through the lower levels, all the way to the highest. Okay, now, look at it. It showed the fear and the lust in me. Okay, a lot of that can be in your subconscious mind. You don't even have the face ID. You're lustful. You're jealous. It's in your subconscious. You have to face reality, and the love thaws you out so it gets all this gunk out of you like Pandora's box, like a cannonball shot out of a cannon. The more you love, it brings out your true nature. You've been hiding in yourself who knows how many lifetimes of reincarnation. Okay, so when I was going through this tremendous experience of realizing that we're all this one God of perfect love who have always existed, which is way beyond the physical astral and causal dimensions. Okay, now, it showed the fear in me. The fear is what turns a lot of atomic energy into matter when we forget we're totally existing and puts us in this dream hypnotic trance and we're trapped in, we're trapped. This is a great game of life. Can you wake up and get smart to yourself? Or will you end up committing suicide like that guy who was supposed to be the most famous or this guy? This is hell, man. It's common knowledge. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's a rat race. We don't love enough. We just don't love enough and that's it. 
We put our money on this and that, but we don't love. We're too afraid. When you're afraid, you don't think of love. You just don't. You're hypnotized. We got to really use our willpower and, and start thinking of loving because it takes you into other realms that this world thinks sounds too good to be true and they're not even going to try to get there because they don't have the faith they can conquer the fear that's blocking them from it. But I'm trying to tell you, when I woke up in the morning, this tremendous love, it showed the fear in me and it showed the lust. Now lust is when you're pussy whipped. You're a slave to sex desire. You're not the king, you're not the ruler, you're not the master, you're obsessed, it's in your subconscious mind, you can't control it. Okay, that's troubles, that's troubles, that's troubles. Anytime you discover a hidden fault, you better thank God you had the strength, because now you know your weakness and you can do something to conquer it. But if you don't know your weakness, you can't do the slightest thing and you'll walk into problems where you just destroy yourself. Velvic. I've seen it happen so many Velvic. times. Velvet, we have to, we have to take off man I okay one, let me tell you the last question. thing let me tell you the last thing i was leading up to that's so important all right, all right. now this is what's important now watch look at look at this is really important i'm not exaggerating now watch we're in this dimension you got to have some powerful experience to start waking up or you're just going to live the way the world is. i told you the first flash of love light i got which i instantly forgot because they hate the fear is so strong i didn't i didn't realize the importance of love right okay that started me on the spiritual path Many years later, I got the second flash I told you where I woke up and I'm one with everybody's God's perfect love. But I lost that too, even though it was way more powerful and lasts longer than the first one. Okay, now look at this is what I'm trying to tell you is so important. Some people get as far as I've gotten right now, all right? This is a spiritual path. It's a real thing. It's infinitely more powerful than everything the world does. So you got to use your intelligence. You're not an animal. you got to understand what I'm saying or else you'll be in trouble. Now look at this. The spiritual path is beyond words. You're fortunate if you get the idea that you're God and you go on the path. Because the world doesn't think they're God, they're going that way. And you're using your personal power to walk away from the whole universe. Now watch. But it's only a flash. So these are different stages of waking up and I'm still in the world's dimension. I just had flashes. I'm not smart. I haven't made it. I'm not smarter than anybody that I'm putting down and saying they're wrong. I'm still just like they are. I just got flashes, but I wasn't strong enough to hold them. Okay. In other words, I don't practice what I preach and walk my talk very much, just a little bit. Okay, now watch. I can tell you, basically, I'm not supposed to be telling you all this stuff. So I hope this is not it. I told you, man. Why do you keep asking that question? I told you, you're not listening. We're not what supposed question to did you tell. Ask? Look, we're not supposed to tell until we know. Because if you tell and you don't know, where's your power? You don't know. You're just like, yeah, it's just an idea. But if you know, you've got all the power to help them. Way more than I do at this low level. You don't want to go telling somebody something Why you don't know. Why are you risking yourself? Okay, look. I'm going to end it right now. You're asking all these questions, man. Oh, the reason, okay, I'll tell you what I think. I think it's just because I didn't think. I didn't really want to do this, okay? So I think I'm just telling you this stuff because I didn't think enough. If I had thought in depth, I wouldn't have told you guys a word. But, see, like, basically... But now you've told a lot of people. This is going to be... Look, at basically, people, basically, basically, I made my mind up. I wasn't going to do what I'm doing. Right. So I contradict myself heavily. Okay, now watch. Another part of me made my mind up. I never again wanted people to video me just because of what goes through right now. But when you guys came up, I was very naive. I still haven't learned. I'm still really stupid. No, 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 look no, at, no. I know myself. I know my experience. So don't say no. You don't know why I'm stupid. I'm not talking about you. Okay. I'm talking about the actual thing of that why it's not a mistake because we are not trying to exploit you we're trying to help you okay. reach a larger audience okay well i don't know man i don't i don't want to keep discussing this i don't okay no that's fine but, we, Velvet. but let me tell you the last thing i was leading up to i don't know if you're gonna pay attention look at the I've last listening. the last thing i'm We've leading been... up to this is okay. really important i told you i'm just like everybody else in this dimension right i'm on the spiritual path but I haven't made it. I haven't made the goal. You start out at the position you're in with the idea. And then you go for it. But it takes strength. Just like anything else you try to achieve in life. You gotta work at it. It takes effort. Okay? And I haven't made it, so I'm just like everybody else, right? Now, here's the punchline I'm trying to tell you that's so important. Some people get as far as I've gotten right now. It has to happen after the second flash of love. The first flash of love is what the Christian Bible, New Testament calls the John the Baptist experience. We're John the Baptist, we baptize our own self. The second flash of love is what the Bible, the New Testament, calls the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
We're the Holy Ghost. We baptize ourselves. In between John the Baptist and the Holy Ghost is the first coming of Jesus Christ. Because all three of these people are the same person on different stages of the spiritual path of waking up that we're God. And somewhere along the line after where I'm at now will be the second coming of Christ, which is a more powerful personal experience of realizing that you're God. But the point I'm trying to tell you now is what the Christian Bible in the New Testament means by the sin against the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> it's important to understand this. Now here's what it means. <clears throat> Some people get as far as I've gotten right now on the spiritual path of waking up that we're God. Okay. But no matter what they've gone through, no matter if they got a spiritual master and they gave billions of dollars away and they were kings of all the countries and they gave that up away and they gave up all worldly desires and they went off to live by themselves and they spent years in meditation, no matter what, they get to this certain stage and they're too afraid to keep going <clears throat> because that is the significance of fear in life. It keeps us from knowing that we're God. It keeps us from knowing our spiritual nature. It turns the light of atomic energy into matter. And it makes us think we're physical bodies. Right. And it makes us lose faith in owning ourselves. So what happens is they get as far as I've gotten. They're too afraid to keep going no matter how much effort they had made. And no matter how much they believed in it. And they knew that other people had made it. They lose faith that they can make it. They go back to living the way that the world lives. They're sinning against that second flash love I got that's showing us God's perfect love. And they don't forgive their own self, and so they got off the spiritual path, which is pure death, and they'll have to be reincarnated who knows how many more lifetimes to try it again. Do you realize how significant that is? That if you realize that, and you get on a spiritual path, boy, you say, man, I tell you, baby, I'm gone. I'm not going to talk about this. This is serious stuff. On that note, huh? on that note we'll end. Okay, we let's, gotta, end. let's Vivid, end. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, okay? We're not going to exploit you. We're going to turn this into something that's going to reach the public and affect them. We're going to put it on CD. It's going to be like it's going to be amazing because people are going to want to hear the truth. Because there's not enough truth nowadays. It's all advertising and what catches the eye. It's not the truth of the mind and or the spirit. Philosophy that leads to the truth. Right? Yeah, it's not. It's not even close to any of that. So you, this isn't a mistake. I want you to. I want when I, we, we depart from you, we we want you to know that this is not a mistake. This is something that's going to to actually do good in this world to avoid all the evil and avoid everything else. To avoid all. Like to take people's minds off disease and let them know the truth. Like you're helping so many people and okay, you don't even know it. Here's That's why I'm like so emotional about this right now okay. because you don't even know like on what a level you're you're reaching and it's just okay. Now watch this. Watch this. Now let's be sincere. All three of us. Let's be sincere. Let's do this. Let us pray. Okay. I want you guys. I don't say we have to do it right now, but I want you guys to do it. I'm going to do it after you leave. Now watch. Let us pray to God, which is our highest nature, our truest self, that knows everything. Whenever we pray to God, we should. We can chill. Do you get it? Pray to God. God is your highest nature, your true self. So you guys have to pray to God to guide you to do what is best for everybody, that this will work for everybody. God's will oh will work. God. Thank you so much. Thank you guys, man. I give all the credit to God. I don't want any credit. Credit goes to our highest nature, who everybody's truest oneself is, the God of perfect love. Right. And we always pray that God will work through us to make this and everything else in our lives a perfect success. Let like God's will be done. Right, let like God's will be done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Jeff. You.